What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself, and today I got a very special guest for you guys. I'm talking about an A1 mover and shaker, the voice of the indies that she calls herself, uh, founder of Spill the T TV. Did I say that right? Spill the T yeah. TV, and of course, con content creator and event curator. And I'm talking about event after event after event. Uh, my pa favorite part, I'm just going to go ahead and say this before I even say your name about you, is just the hustle. Like, really, A1. We're going to talk about that part seriously. None other than Teacup is right here to speak to y'all, maybe even preach to y'all. Um, I got a lot of questions for y'all, and I think anybody, not just artists, but anybody who's thinking of moving and grinding in the industry will get a benefit from just learning about her moves. And I'm interested to learn more about her moves. So, no, so without further ado, like talk to us. I appreciate you coming out, Tika. Of course, no problem. Wow, you gave me such a grand introduction. I appreciate that. I hope I um this conversation, you know, lives up to that. So thank you. <laughs> no, nah, for for sure, for sure. Like, all right, I guess I can start here, you know, just just get into the flow. How did you even start like doing what you do right now? Like, what was the first entry? Because I see so much in music, but it's not even just music at this point. Right, right, right. Um, how I started doing all of this, wow. Um, I started doing all of this in college. Um, I've always just felt like, you know, I've had so many, like, I've tried to rap before. I've tried to, like, do so <laughs> many things. And I feel like I was never good at anything. Like, I went to college with my major undecided. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, so in school, I had a lot of talented friends, um, friends that threw parties, friends that um, could DJ, could sing, rap, all of that. Gotcha. Um, it was my homie DJ Prez. He had a radio show at school on campus. So I ended up um, basically getting on there talking one day, and then it just happened. It just went on there from there. I was like doing radio um, locally in college. Um, how I kind of got into Atlanta, me and my partner, Bree, um, it was like a lot of things going on just in the black community. Um, it was first like Mike Brown, I believe he got killed in what was that, like 2005 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then it was something else happened. It was like these Baltimore riots happened, like as a result of like some black, something black that happened. Um, so at that point, me and Bree, we wanted to come up with a solution of pretty much you know just how to build black people you know mm. so yeah we created this nonprofit called emoja life so that was really my introduction to atlanta as far as like um throwing events i would say got you and then i've always had my interview series coming from west georgia and then yeah i just ended up combining to like combining community and then combining like the arts and that's just my brand that, that's, that's definitely the brand. So what I want to skip and just ask you, what are your aspirations? Are you trying to be a, a big personality on a TV show or something like that? Because, I mean, I, I see you, it seems like everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, I would say, yeah, the goal was always like interviews first, like always just to talk to people, um, to get like the untold stories. And of course, to talk about shit that people want to talk about on the timeline all day. So let's bring it to life. Um, I would say my goal, yeah, would be to be a TV personality. But to more importantly, I want to kind of bring, bring unity, like, get black people into like spending money with each other loving each other coming together to push this forward because everything mm. that's going on right now or everything that's been going on within the past like five or six years that i've been active in it's like we just need to come together like we just need to really spread love it starts with us so that's just kind of my goal and my passion with everything i do so i can't really say what all i want to do as of yet but i do know i love i love 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 interviewing like interviewing and telling stories um talking about the atlanta culture that's always been first got you and because you interview so much and you've talked to i don't know how many artists right now do you know how many artists oh i have probably like 
almost 200 videos on my YouTube of like just artists, people from other cities. Yeah. Um, so much like content things going on in Atlanta. So yeah, I, okay. I can't even keep up at this point. 200 then, 200 plus, we're gonna say that. I'm 300 coming real soon. Real and because soon. you've interviewed so many people, like my interest, my um, yeah, question is, how do you choose the artists that you actually talk to? Because I think a lot of artists don't necessarily understand what makes them interesting or just sometimes it might not, of course, even be about interesting. There's other ways that might make people interested in um, interviewing you. How do you personally select artists? Um, so I started out selecting artists. Um, well, first, because when I started doing interviews, when I was like coming up on the Atlanta scene, probably in like 2014, 2015, I wanted to get like, you know, all the big names, you know, this and that, woo -woo -woo. but I wasn't cool enough. You know, I didn't know everybody. I wasn't plugged in, you know. So what I did was, and I started throwing, like artists started from the um, showcase events. When artists started to ask me, I'm sorry, from the Mojo Life events, like I would involve artists in like the Juneteenth festivals every year. And they started gotcha. asking me, to throw shows for them, like, you know, just outside of Emoja, like outside of my nonprofit. Right, right, so right. I kind of made it a thing as to where, like, made it a competition, like, yeah, whoever wins the show on Cypher or this and that, they get the interview. So, like, that kind of started that thing. That's how, like, I kind of built my community because it would be like, okay, people will go hard, bring on their gotcha. people, compete for the interview, and then you'll see whoever got interviewed, and then it's like, okay, next time it's to go. Um, but what makes artists interesting to me to interview is, uh, is you having an audience, you know, people that want to hear your story, um, mm -hmm. whether that is them physically saying on social media, cause I use Twitter a lot. I'll see people, um, quote their lyrics or I'll see people mention them like, Hey, how did you do this? Or how did you do that? Or what inspired that? Or people saying, Hey, well, check out this project. Okay. Well, we heard this song. We want to hear more. So that's what really piques my interest um, for wanting to interview an artist, people that have an audience that want to listen. So. Got you. That makes sense. So it's funny because everything always seems to come back to artists needing to build a fan base mm -hmm. and get some kind of interest before other people get interested in them. But mm -hmm. I think that's a, even from a journalist perspective or a interviewer perspective, I think that's interesting. The fact that, to really think about it more cleanly, like, okay, people are interested in this, so let me figure out what the story is there and what's worth talking about there. Do you, uh, do you find anything that you do with artists? I'm sure now at this point, artists just are reaching out to you, right, mm -hmm. to um, interview you. Are there like some no-nos when it comes to that? Um, yeah, I have turned artists, I don't really say I've turned artists down, I wouldn't say that, but I would just say, okay, well, it's not time right now to interview, let me follow you, I follow your journey, because of course, as a journalist, you want to interview credible people, you know, um, you want to interview people that, like, I want to be able to interview you, and your interview was still relevant five years later, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm not interviewing you and then your ghost five years later, or, you know, nobody's mentioning you. So I want some credibility to my interviews too. So I don't necessarily tell them no, like, Oh no, I can't interview you. I'll just say, you know, let me follow your journey. Mm -hmm. um, and let me watch you build and grow. And then when you do have that audience that's ready to listen, then that's when we can get it popping. <laughs> <laughs> got you like let me be sure you're gonna be in the game first right that you exactly that you before i put my game. stamp on you true that, that makes sense i mean i feel like people don't understand sometimes like the value of the platform because if you just drop a whole bunch of bad interviews right with people that at this time right don't no one cares about from a fan base standpoint that's really going to dilute the fat platform so eventually art people aren't gonna watch your interviews anyway. So there's no value. Like you create you, you destroying the value of my platform. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, okay. Even though my platform, I will say my platform is for the underrepresented at the same time because because of the fact that I was denied a lot of access to events and stuff early on, or you know, it wasn't so easy for me to get in certain rooms or to be around certain people or to even interview certain people. I kind of created my own community when I started the events and started highlighting that through the interviews. So I do, I am for the underrepresented and I do try to go for artists that they have an audience that wants to hear them, but they just don't have that stamp yet, you know, or they don't mm -hmm. have that certain, they might not have complex or they may not have 
certain interview platforms checking for them just yet. So they have that community. They have people, they have people, you know, when I'm like, hey, what new music should I listen to? Or who should I have on this show? They have people tagging them. They have people doing this, but they just don't have any backstories. And you'd be surprised. There's so many people just like public figures, um, artists, all of that. And when I say voice of the indies, just to make this clear, I like I yeah, my main focus is artists was always been community. So indies, everybody independent, everybody underground, everybody making their own moves, whether that's a business owner, whether that's an artist, whether that's a person creating a movement, creating an event, whether that's a figure that has like a key piece in something. So it's in the it's independent, not gotcha. just indie artists. So gotcha. yeah, so I try to get these a lot of these businesses, um, a lot of these things, a lot of these things that a lot of these people or places or things that influence us directly in Atlanta or directly in our everyday lives, because you have certain people always talking about what Cardi B is doing, what Gunna is doing, what this and that is doing. Okay. But you go to Edgewood every day, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But you, <laughs> yeah. you go to this local show with one of my favorite artists out right now. And that's an indie artist is Jay Newton. You go to a Jay Newton show every week. You know what I'm saying? Like, all, like, Stuff like that. I try to right. tell those stories. Got you. Got you. When did you find things got easier for you? Because you talked about, look, hey, I wasn't getting in everything at the beginning. But, look, you know, you're you, you getting in some, some things definitely now. Right? You <laughs> Thank you. seem to be, every time I see something, I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll be able to, like, be one of those people, the correspondents and people who get to report. Like, how'd you get to that position, though? So, yeah, I like I I literally had to create it for myself. Like when I started, um, because when I was doing the Emoja Life events and I met Artisans Bar, um, I brought I did the Emoja Life nonprofit event at uh, at Artisans Bar, and they told me they were like, okay, uh, well, we don't want this. We want parties. Like, we don't want just sit downs and gatherings. We want people dancing, drinking. We want parties. So I was like, well, uh, I don't really do parties. I don't really do showcases. So I brought in my partner, 40 Ounce Poe. I brought him in and he started doing showcases. And then like people started, like more people um, like would see me there and they just started asking me, you know, to do more stuff like what I did with the Mojo Life, like more stuff, including like the art and artists. So yeah, when I started doing that, um, cause artists was new. It was new. Department store had just closed. A lot of venues or places that people would go had just closed. So artisans was new. Yeah. Everybody was like, okay, what is going on there? Um, you would see it on the timeline because I would have um, like R&B and chill parties, crunk juice parties, or I'll mm -hmm. have these events called like um, show and ciphers where we would have the monthly ciphers or we'll have like Apollo shows and stuff. So it was mm -hmm. always something going on at artisans, like at least once a month. And it would always be like, crazy videos of like wow um wow these people just got into a battle rap somebody got killed or <laughs> no not killed but you know killed nah, in a yeah, battle no, rap yeah. or yeah we had apollo they just got booed so it just started yeah. becoming a talk so then more people started because people it would come back to my page and it would see like interviews footage interviews just all based on that community then that's kind of how people started recognizing me started finally letting me in like okay this girl has something going on this girl has something and it was fairly new because it was kind of a shift in Atlanta at that time so it was fairly new and it was something that's being introduced because during that Definitely. time a lot of new artists got introduced you know just on the scene from the Definitely. events and from not even just my events from events surrounding those events from other curators that were artisans or from other platforms that were coming up in Atlanta during that time. So. Got you. It's, it's dope to see that you actually built your own platform when you couldn't get in. Right. So co let's go build a platform. Cause so many people complain that I can't get in, can't get in, but the best way today, even outside of just being an artist, we always tell artists to get fans, a professional in the industry today, like you don't have to just say, I got to go through a label or I got to go work on one of these, other general situations you can do what you did right and i'm sure now people are willing to offer positions or can even consider you more likely from building your own platform for other positions that you know you might have wanted before or or you don't even necessarily want but they still like yo you want to do this you know what i mean yeah so, so it's dope to see you did that and one thing i i heard though was the fact that you said you didn't do showcases and 
like party type events. And it's funny because you people say do everything, say yes to everything, but you have a self awareness enough to know. I guess that wasn't your thing though. And but I ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> but then you end up doing it anyway. Like what made so? How do you balance that? Like between certain things and opportunities between whether it's your thing and you just you just didn't know like you you kind of you didn't feel like doing it or you didn't know enough to know it it's not your not for you or it's actually for real for real not you i'm gonna say this um from like a standpoint of like people that are listening for me you have to really listen to your audience like you have to listen to them because i had people like a lot of people would tell me they would love the Juneteenth events. They would love the Emoji Life events. They would love the feel. And that is something Atlanta does not have, you know what I'm saying, at the moment. And people could feel my spirit was really genuine. And that, like, because I, like, I used to have events, because um, artists was rocking with me so hard. Like, they used to um, just, you know, like, give me some of the bar and just, like, you know, that would cover my DJ or whatnot. So I've had free events before, like, whole free events. I've had events where, um, where I, like, I don't think I've ever charged an artist to perform. Mm. Probably I've charged artists to perform for my nonprofit, actually. But, and I have, but oh. I haven't charged artists to perform for Spill the Tea, which is so backwards. But it was a nonprofit, you know, like, I had to, I wasn't trying to make a profit. I was trying to pay for like the venue and stuff or trying to get supplies to help this charity or you know this and that yeah, it makes sense right so when i came to artisans i've never charged the artist to perform um or any of that so it was kind of like a safe space that was created in atlanta because you had certain platforms that were it was 20 artists on a bill the curators didn't yeah. really care about the artists they were trying to get a quick dollar so everybody felt that like my heart was genuine they were like well you should just go ahead and you should start throwing shows. You should start doing this and that because you really have something. And yeah, it took an ex-boyfriend to tell me he was like, um, cause I was ha I was helping Poe with his showcase, and it took an ex-boyfriend to tell me he was like, you should start throwing parties. Like he was like, it doesn't have to always be about the artists. You can start throwing parties. He was like, or maybe you can combine both. Mm -hmm. um, my home girl was like, yeah, I would really love a karaoke night. And yeah, so I came up with Army and Chill was my first event at Artisans as Spill the Tea. So it was like, uh, it was a throwback party. I had like four or five artists that did covers and it was crazy. It was like over 800 tickets gone. It was crazy. It was yeah, like it was my good. first. Mm -hmm. And I kept having like a lot of big events, probably after two years of doing events at Artisans, doing events every month at Artisans for two years. I probably only had like two dead events. So Artisans named a drink after me what? called the Teacup Margarita. Yo, that's hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I would tell people just listen, listen to the universe, listen to your audience. Um, always be open to new things. Even if you think something isn't for you, just try it. You know, you don't have to probably stick with it or, do something different but just give it a try and listen like listen your fans supporters whoever they they will tell you what they want to see mm. you know? what's something that you learned from like moving how you've been moving and being somebody who navigates and there's a lot of people that you deal with right right mm -hmm. there's a lot of relationships that have to be maintained Ooh. You know what I mean? Well, what's something that you learned throughout that process that you think will be really helpful for people to understand, especially not even just in the music industry, obviously, but, but just, yeah, I don't know. And, and moving and shaking that entrepreneurship as a whole. Hmm. You mean as far as like how, how, to, how to, how to deal with a lot of people or yeah, start there. Okay. Um, I like to say first, you have to understand everybody's different and you kind of can't take things personal. Like mm -hmm. you have to understand everybody wasn't raised like you. Everybody didn't come from your same background and everybody communicates differently. Some people don't know how to communicate. So you kind of can't take things personally. Um, like I know when building certain relationships, you know, people may not respond back or, you know, people may feel away this and that, whatever, just don't take it personal. Um, one thing I'm still learning is to not react to certain things mm. um, because usually you can react in a crazy way and it can rub people the wrong way. But usually when something is meant to be, those people always come back and you don't ever want to leave that impression to them that, oh, you're 
or this, that her person, you know, you're a drama queen, king, whatever, yeah. this and that. Cause people always come back. Like even, even from all those people that I used to try to reach out to back in the day, like I was never nasty or I was like, never like, you know, fuck y'all. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I was no, never irate or anything. And now those people are coming back because, you know, now they see the value or they see what I've created, you know, and I wouldn't even say by myself because I've had people help, but what pretty much I've created, you know, the community that's been created. So, mm. yeah. No, nah, that's real. That's real. That the taking, not taking things personally is something that I feel like everybody has to go through at the beginning of just starting to deal with stuff where you don't understand. Like you said, people have different things going on in their life. Genuinely, sometimes people just, like I said, communicate differently, mm-hmm. like, whatever, whatever it might be. But then... But then, yeah, that uh, I don't know. That's that's just been an interesting thing, and I, I honestly have to still constantly remind myself of that, like every single time. The way I feel, like you know, what, what something's going on, and then I even saw myself just like you say, people come back. Yeah, people will come back. You know, maybe they people never will even circle knew. back because yeah. at least because if you DM somebody or email someone and then they don't respond or they don't give you that response they want, best believe they went to your page and they've seen you. So when your name circle backs around, then they're like, oh shit, i talked to her. And then, cause I've had, I have so many threads, so many DMs where I've tried to, where I've probably hit up people in like 2008 or something like that, 2007, <laughs> and then circle back. Now they in my DMs again, asking for something. And I'm like, yo, like where the hell, where the hell was my response made you up the first time? No, I don't say that, but I don't think that, but I won't say it. I'm still open, you know, to, I'm still very open to, you know, hearing, you know, what's going on. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel you. Cool. Is there, is there anybody um, or anything? Not, that's what I want to say. Is there anything that you feel like you can say to be helpful to people who want to do what you're doing? I know you have a, a unique path in the way you went about it, but, mm-hmm. is, but is there a way that you feel like if, they want to do what you do there's a few things that they should make sure that they get done Hmm. a few things that they should get done if you want to do events or if you want to do medium um of course build relationships of Hmm. course go places like physically go places don't just build relationships through the internet i feel like a lot of people think the internet is just like yes use the internet of course it's very helpful we still go out there and physically meet people. Um, I would say, hmm, what do you have to do to, I guess, do what I did? Um, if people want to help you, let them help. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it, it is always a boundary with that because you never know people's intentions. Mm. But there are some people that are heaven sent that want to help you. Because I, I feel like people have a really hard time struggling with that with asking for help or with accepting help, I should say. Nah, that's real. That's real. Them, them trust issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. them um, trust issues. Yeah, I would say, of course, real relationships. Um, being able to accept help and what else I would say. Um, hmm. I would say, man, just do it shit just just do it don't overthink don't yes research yes study the way people have done it successful people um yes you may not have every piece in the beginning i saw this post it was like your first podcast is gonna be trash your first event is gonna be horrible um you know this that and the third you know just do it you have to do it sometimes experience is the best teacher like nah shoot but all the time, in my opinion, at least that's the way I get it. <laughs> that's a bit. Well, hey, I appreciate you. Um, and, and really enjoyed talking to you. And one, everybody, make sure y'all follow Teacup at T E double A C U double P underscore. I'll make sure I put that up on the screen and everything like that. But of course, as always, this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because I sign myself. If you like this video, go ahead to like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not, subscribe. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.